Come on, if you came to give him all the glory. Anybody know he deserves it on today? Welcome to an incredible evening, an evening where we celebrate what God has done and what God is doing in the life of his church. And more specifically, here at Tabernacle Baptist Church through our C.S. Hamilton Scholarship. That's right, tonight we are celebrating what is an incredible opportunity for us to invest in our future. 
And tonight we're going to highlight one of God's absolute best generals, our beloved pastor who served here 40 years, Dr. C.S. Hamilton. This is always important for me. I I'm grateful for the legacy and the lineage that Dr. Hamilton has already laid down for us. They call me C3. We have Charles Thomas Walker, our founder, Charles Spencer Hamilton, and me, Charles Edward Goodman. Something about those Charleses here at Tabernacle. But tonight we're so blessed because you're going to be able to hear some wonderful music, but also some incredible moving testimonies. Because one of the things that Dr. Hamilton truly believed in is education. He believed in investing in our young people. And that's what we're here to do tonight, to celebrate, to highlight, to look at all of his achievements and to make sure that we continue doing what he's pledged for us so many years ago. Let us pray as we begin this incredible evening as we celebrate Dr. C.S. Hamilton. God, we're so blessed and grateful for the seeds that have been sown so many years ago that we are still benefiting from the fruit. And we're so grateful tonight for so many who are tuned in to be a part of this C.S. Hamilton fundraiser. We thank you for the man. We thank you for the legacy. We thank you for what he meant to this church and so many more. And so now tonight, God, we pray that you are glorified, that people's hearts are pricked to understand that we believe in our future through our young people. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Quality of leadership. And I believe that one of the things that sort of sticks out to me is that Reverend Hamilton sort of found himself at the crossroads of where great leaders are often made, or at least where they actually lead in Augusta, and that is Tabernacle. Tabernacle, since its inception, has been this church of leadership. So it's not just the individuals who lead the church, but it's the church itself. And so you have sort of this um, spirit of leadership that run that courses through the veins of the church. After C.T. Walker, you had the Reverend Silas X. Floyd. Uh, and then after that, you had Reverend Lowry. And so it kind of keeps going on and on. By the time Reverend Hamilton gets here, the foundation of leadership as it runs through Tabernacle had already been laid. However, there must have been something special about Reverend Hamilton simply because, as I mentioned before, there had been leaders in Augusta before him, who had led the NAACP before Reverend Hamilton. But Reverend Hamilton had a quality about himself. He was able to bring people together uh, from different walks of life. He was able to work with students at Payne College, ministers in the Augusta area, high school students, youth, the youth portion of the NAACP, um, people from Fort Gordon, you name it. He brought all of these disparate parts together to work in tandem. And I think that was a quality that very few people had in the Augusta area. I think the other thing though, and, and this is sort of like the, um, I guess, um, Reverend, Reverend uh, Goodman kind of broke the mold, if you will. But um, one thing is that he went to Morehouse and Morehouse trains a lot of their, most of the Morehouse men that come through there, if you look at the track record, they go on to do and accomplish extraordinary things. Uh, the aforementioned Judge John Ruffin, the aforementioned Reverend Otis Moss III, even C.T. Walker started out when Morehouse was still called the Augusta Baptist Institute and still located here in Augusta, Georgia. So I think that it was a perfect storm for Reverend Hamilton the training at Morehouse, leading Tabernacle, and Tabernacle being sort of this leadership beacon in the community. You put those two elements together and you have the perfect environment for quality leadership during the modern civil rights movement. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. My God is glad. Rock of my soul. Oh, right. 
Rock of my, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. Rock of my, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. I may be weak. Rock of my soul. But thou art strong. Rock of my soul. I'm leaning down. Rock of my soul. I'm leaning down. Oh, rock of my, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. Oh, rock of my, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. Oh, rock of my, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. Oh, rock of my, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Oh, rock of my soul. Oh, my, rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my. God be the glory, honor, and praise. So I've been asked to encourage you to give generously, financially, to the C.S. Hamilton College Scholarship Program. The Reverend Dr. Charles Spencer Hamilton ordained me, and now I serve as servant leader of the deacon ministry, which is partnered with our very own the Reverend Dr. Charles E. Goodman, Jr., senior pastor of this historic Tabernacle Baptist Church for the past 14 years. He has taken this program to the next level. Over the past four years, Tabernacle has provided annually 45 college scholarships, each valued at $1,000 each, each year. We've also been able to raise $50,000 uh, every year. However, this year, our goal is $70,000. We believe that this will allow our students to see Christ in the crises. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Education is the engine that drives and motivates our students into careers and into society successfully. So scholarships then is the initiator of that process. The choice is yours, but it is much better to give than to receive. So give through Givelify, Cash App, and text to give. Remember to insert CSH and your church member number in the comment section. It's not too late to give. It's never too late to give. So give 
And when you give, you will be better. When you give, you will be great. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you now for the words and we thank you for the thoughts. But more importantly, we thank you for the blessing of those who are going to put these into action and give so that we may be of service, serving our young people, our students who are in need. And we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, the praise. In Jesus name. Amen. How did he feel about teaching them? I think that he thought that it was very important. Uh, uh, it was something that he always emphasized. So I think that uh, he thought it was important to teach them. Okay. Reverend Hamilton was the most uh, time conscious individual that I have ever met. And he used to tell us that if you're late, you're not only wasting my time, you're wasting yours as well. Mm. And we used to set our clock by Reverend Hamilton back in the day when church started at 11 o'clock. Reverend Hamilton started on time, and at about 12, 10 or 12, 15, we were walking out of Tabernacle. So he did not waste time. He used to say, it does not take all day to do anything. School, um, when high school I was dual enrolled, um, I was dual enrolled at the Richmond County Technical Career Magnet School where I was a part of the first inaugural uh, graduating class. Um, during my junior and senior year, I was a dual enrolled student at Augusta Technical College where I took English 101 pre-cal college algebra. So when I transitioned to my freshman year of college at Savannah State University, I didn't have to take those um, freshman classes. It, um, I went in my freshman year. Um, freshman year, sophomore year, all went well. Um, my junior year, I was able to study abroad in Ghana with the social work program of Savannah State. And in Ghana, um, I pretty much gathered a global mindset of teaching. I was able to teach out in Ghana and my senior year, which was in 2019, I was able to start my student teaching experience at a charter school called Oglethorpe Charter School in Savannah, Georgia. So the CLS Hamilton Scholarship helped me getting through school by letting me, allow me to buy textbooks um, with the money. I was able to use the money to get any personal essentials that I needed. Like if I needed to go to the grocery store or to the store, I was able to get the essentials with that. And I was just able to really, you know, I know the college life is um, a struggle sometimes, but it helped me out in the struggle. Uh, ended up attending Morehouse College. I'm a graduate of Morehouse College class of 2019. Um, I studied religion with a minor in education. Um, while at Morehouse, wow, I got to do a lot, honestly, uh, by the grace of God, honestly. So study abroad, uh, I got to study abroad twice. Um, I was a student ambassador while at Morehouse College. I also got to uh, help run an after school program to mentor young uh, men at a local elementary school, not too far from Morehouse College. Uh, great homecomings, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, good internship experiences as well uh interning in new orleans interning in atlanta uh, the internship in new orleans is how i ended up getting my job down here and getting accepted into grad school uh because that internship and i did so well in the program um they offered me that job in my grad school acceptance uh, which leads me to where i am now which i'm currently uh in my last semester of my grad program mm -hmm. I um and getting my master's of arts in teaching um and then i'm teaching full-time um at the school at a school down here arthur as charter school teaching fourth grade ela um yeah so going back to so fun that i actually was denied into morehouse the first time i applied okay uh yeah. nothing wrong with that you know it, a little setback just a yeah, little yeah, bit yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but i was denied and then accepted on academic probation um but like, I just still went for it because God had showed me in a dream that like, I was going to Morehouse College. So I was like, okay, okay. Uh -huh. uh, it was hard, <laughs> it was hard, <laughs> of course. But I said, I'm going, 
cool, let's do it. And so, you know, that was a dream come true for me because I had wanted to go to Morris College since I was, like I said, about 10 years old, essentially. Um, that was my, fir my first time being introduced to Morris College right. was at Tabernacle Baptist Church. Um, with them bringing the Glee Club at the end of the month, like That's they right. did anywhere. Um, my mother took me at 10 to go see them. So from that point on, I was like, I want to go. So going was a dream come true. So I think the first thing I would say to anybody pursuing um, any goal, any dream, but especially higher education, go for it. Whatever it is that you want, set that goal and go for it. Um, so like, for example, my first, my first year after Morehouse, uh, I had an opportunity to go to Costa Rica for the summer. Um, and I wanted to go so bad, but that was, I think the year before that, that's when all those uh, planes were disappearing, disappearing. So like uh, the Malaysian jet and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and my mother wasn't having it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not like, having it, man. <laughs> yeah, she's like, nah, you're, you're not going to our country. So, you know, out of respect for her with her with respect for my mother, you know, I, I stayed and I, uh, I worked at a, a summer camp in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, gave me the best of both worlds. Uh, it was a church summer camp, so working with kids, but then like a Christian perspective to it as well. So that was fun. Um, but like I, I told her, I was like, next summer I'm going out of the country. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know necessarily where I'm going, but I'm going out of the country, mm -hmm. and I, I'm just preparing you now for it. So <laughs> <laughs> then a uh, couple of months later, that fall semester, I ended up applying for a study abroad program to South Africa. Um, Ended up getting into that, and um, that was a uphill battle. But like I said, you fight for your goals and you fight for your dreams. Whatever you want, go get it. So my program was about ten thousand dollars, I think, roughly. Right. Um, but it's six weeks. I was getting eight credits. You know, they're giving us a little spending money to like get food and stuff while we're over there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a it was a good um, it was a good deal for the most part. Um, so I I had to pray, <laughs> pray hard and work for it. I was posting my GoFundMe like crazy. <laughs> I started working in the cafeteria at Clark Atlanta University. Yeah. Um, I was reaching out to people of uh, like scholarships and stuff like that. Um, I even was talking to the program like, hey, do y'all have any extra money? Like I'm working. Just meet me halfway, right. uh, please something and um crazy story the crazy thing is the money for the program was due may 15th i did not have the money at all so i just kind of had at that point i was like i fought hard like almost a year it, you know and i almost gave up and it was my girlfriend uh who said just call them back and just ask one more time so i called them back they were like we got more money for you um he, he said, no, he said, I'm going into a scholarship meeting right now. So email me how much you need and I'll see what I can do. Okay. Okay. So went into the meeting. I went into a class, can't be in phone in class. I come back out and I see my email and they said, we got you another, uh, I think he had got me another 1500. Okay. And they were like, I just need, we need you to get this money in as soon as possible. I did not pay that program off. And so um, I was supposed to leave May 26. I paid the program off May 26 at 12.01 on the dot. <laughs> <laughs> like literally on the dot. I, um, and it's good because I had people surrounding me, like family who was also like, this is your dream. Keep mm -hmm. going. We're going to support you. So like the day before, I had a going away dinner at Logan's. And I was like, mama, what are we going to do? Because... You know, we ain't paid the money yet. She said, we're going to go in here. We're going to have this dinner. We're gonna <laughs> we, this still your going away party. You going away. <laughs> it's like, yes, ma'am. So, of course, that was helpful. Just like surround yourself with people who are going to push you for those goals and send the goal and going for it. And just keeping God in the midst of that goal is huge. Uh, like I said, pursuing anything, higher education, uh, any dreams that you have for yourself. Um, but make sure they line up with like, what God wants you to do as well. So for me, I use that testimony just to tell people like, I want my life to be essentially, oh, if LeBert can do it, I can do it. Not right. no, wow, he did that. It's like, no, he did it. He did it like this. And that's what he said he did. I think I can do it too. Like, that's what I wanted to reflect. So honestly, just go for it. Um, with the CS Hamilton Scholarship, when I say the best way to put the CS Hamilton Scholarship, it comes on time, at least for me, Mm -hmm. my four years at Morehouse, literally in the nick of time, it always came. Um, and when I say, whether that's buying a book, whether I say, um, 
right when I needed some much needed groceries in my house. Um, when I needed something to just tie me over until I got home for um, Christmas break or Thanksgiving break. Um, when I was back with family, I have to pay for nothing. Mm -hmm. The CS Hamilton scholarship was always on time. Um, and that's why anytime you all call me, I always make sure um, that I answer the phone and I volunteer because it's helped me in so many ways on um, so many good days, so many bad days. It definitely helps um, a lot of young college students, especially myself, um, anybody, a lot of my family members have also received the scholarship and it aided them in their matriculation into college. So I will always donate to the uh, scholarship or continue to donate to the scholarship because it definitely helped me and it definitely helped my family members in our collegiate matriculation. I'm gonna live so Live so God can use me Anywhere, Lord Anytime, anytime I'm gonna live so Yes, because his work of, of supporting young ministers didn't end when he left uh, Morehouse. Uh, he was dean at Morehouse from 1969 to about 1975, but his reputation uh, allowed a lot of young people to seek him out, you know, even when he wasn't actively on the staff. And you see, he was still on the board of the School of Religion. So he still had maintained contacts through the board work that he did. Um, he served as president of the uh, Georgia Convention. Um, at the time of his death, he was the only one that served as president two times. I think that the first thing he would do is he would get up on Sunday at church service and tell everybody to take a good look at Stacey Abrams and use her as a prime example of what they, his congregation, should be doing. And I think that voter education and voter registration would be the cornerstone of his ministry in 2021. Because the thing that I appreciate about some of the old heads, some of the old leaders, is that the job is never complete. You know, we sit here and we get a victory, and we all, now all of a sudden we want to sort of, you know, beat our chest and, and do a dance, or do an end zone dance, or whatever the case is. No. This, that's not how it works. There's always another fight going on. 
And so I think that what his message to younger folk in the area is that don't get complacent, okay? Don't get complacent. Georgia is not blue. It might be slightly purple right now, but Georgia is not blue. And always fight as if you're behind, okay? So you'll keep on moving. So I think that his message would be to get out there, um, register people to vote, but not just register people to vote, educate them on the importance of voting, why you're voting, who you're voting for, and what are some of the issues. I think he also would have people going to county commission meetings, becoming um, you know, uh, observers of our government, calling our county commissioners, voicing our opinion. There's strength in numbers. What an incredible experience tonight. Thank you so much to so many who share their stories. Thank you to Mama Hamilton and his family that shared some incredible insight about who Dr. Hamilton is. Our diaconate ministry led by Chairman Ronald Brown. Thank you so much for your work and all of our deacons that really work hard to make this a successful event. Also, thank you for the past recipients of our CS Hamilton Scholarship. They are doing some incredible things and we're so proud of them. But I'm so grateful that you tuned in. I'm grateful that you decided to spend a few moments with us on a Sunday night and once again, learn more about Dr. C.S. Hamilton and how you can help us continue to make an impact through our C.S. Hamilton Scholarship Fund. Listen, I'm so grateful that you decided to make this an opportunity to say, you know what? I wanna make sure that the seeds I'm sowing goes beyond me because every seed that you sow goes beyond each of us. We really wanna leave a legacy and that's what this is about. That's why you and I have an incredible opportunity to share into the future. For me personally, what large shoes that I've been asked to fill. 40 years as the pastor of this great church. And I will admit to you, they are overwhelming, but I'm grateful because he led for you and I an opportunity for what it means to make a kingdom influence and a kingdom impact. Thank you, Dr. C.S. Hamilton, for how you showed us what it means to give of yourself, to make sure that others are blessed because of your coming. And once again, we're always gonna make this a highlight for us because we know the legacy of Dr. C.S. Hamilton will continue to live on here at Tabernacle Baptist Church. Thank you again for tuning in. God bless you. Take care.